Well, thank you to everyone who's watching and joining us tonight. Um, these last few months have been a trying time for all of us. Uh, today is a national day of mourning and lament put on by faith leaders across the country to commemorate those who have died from the coronavirus. Then over the past week, a wound that never fully healed has reopened and engulfed the nation with more grief and anger. Racial injustice has once again risen to the forefront of American society. But sadly, as a city council and as a city, we also mourn the loss of Mayor Adams' eldest daughter, Tiara, who passed over this weekend. Mr. Mayor, our thoughts are with you, our prayers are with you, and we hope you and your family um, uh, stay safe, um, but have uh, happy hearts um, in this tremendously difficult time. Um, but I pray that for Mayor Adams and his family, our city, our nation, that brighter days are ahead, um, and they're waiting to embrace all of us. Uh, so I ask that the city um, and my colleagues join me in a moment for silence. And with that, I call the meeting to order of the June 1st regular city council meeting. Um, if everyone who could please stand uh, and is able to join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, um, can we get a check on the quorum? Um. I have uh, six council members present. Uh, only absence is the mayor, so we do have a quorum for this evening. Thank you so much. At this moment, the chair will entertain any additions, deletions, and amendments to the agenda. Hearing none, we will move to citizen participation. Madam City Clerk. Okay, we've received uh, five comments for this evening, uh, so I'll read them real quick. Um, first one is from Deborah Coates Walton. Greetings, Mayor and Council members. My name is Dr. Deborah Coates Walton, board certified dermatologist, and I am the owner of Aesthetic Dermatology and Dermatologic Surgery Center at 4321 Collington Road. I have been practicing dermatology for over 20 years, all here in the city of Bowie, Maryland and I provide employment for six people. In addition, we sponsor and mentor two high school students every summer. Our center also serves as a rotation site for dermatology residents, physician assistants, and nurse practitioners to fulfill elective requirements for completion of their prospective degrees. My medical practice has been severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Per the orders of the state of Maryland, we closed our medical practice on Thursday, March 19th, and remain closed until Monday, May 18th. Upon reopening during phase one, we have instituted the necessary safety measures, social distancing, personal protective equipment, temperature scanning, massive surface cleaning, et cetera, to keep our employees and patients safe. Having made these changes to adjust to the new normal, our landlord creditors and vendors remain unpaid due to the lack of income not generated by the practice. I understand that the city council will be discussing the next steps for the COVID business recovery plan, which was recommended by the city of Bowie's economic development committee. As a true small business, I am pleading to the council to please help the small business in Bowie and adopt this program. Next one is from several residents of uh, district four. Uh, I'll say their name and then I'll read their comment. Dr. Betty Harris, Reverend Dr. Charlene Mc McCamey, Ms. Michelle Davis, Mr. Savian Davis, Mr. Andre Fisher, Ms. Diani Miller, Ms. Michelle Davis, Ms. Loretta Gray, Mr. and Mrs. William Tresina Ortiz, Ms. Vania Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Randy Gardner, Mr. Leon Andrews, Ms. June Hooks, Ms. Paulette Pittman, Mr. Reginald Lassiter, Ms. Sandra Lassiter, Mr. Corey Williams, Ms. Mary Corsi, Ms. Angela Fields, and Ms. Catherine Topin. We, the residents of District 4, Maryland, 
of District 4 Bowie, Maryland, want to take this opportunity to thank you for your service and commitment to the citizens of Bowie. We applaud your support for discontinuing the, con the construction of the ice rink and welcome a multi-generational institution. We observe your innovative and progressive approach to leadership and your ability to make hard decisions when the pressure is on and maintain a calm and professional demeanor. Everyone will not agree with every decisions you make, but we elected you because we believe that you had the wisdom, experience, and plans to advance our community. We appreciate the fact that you are concerned about the citizens of Bowie and the long-term effects that impact future financial decisions and taxes. Your platform was to help Bowie become financially responsible through thoughtful planning. Thanks for helping take Bowie to the next level. You have our support as well as our prayers for your success. Next one is from Betty Harris from Collington Manors. Honorable Mayor Tim Adams, just a note of thanks and appreciation for your service to our community. The next one is also from Dr. Betty Harris from Collington Manors. Um, Council Lady Roxy and Debu Malu, thank you for your service and commitment to the city of Bowie and citizens of District 4. Thanks for listening and responding to the voice of the residents of District 4. And the last one is from Sarah Earwicker from Montclair Lane. I am writing in regards to the Bowie Ice Arena. I was hoping I could have my letter read at the meeting on Monday, June 1st. I have been a resident of Bowie for 37 years, and I currently am a regular user of the Bowie Ice Arena. I have a real fear that they will make a motion and vote to sell or lease our facility to Black Bear Sports, the owners of Piney Orchard. They should not be able to do this because any sale of city property should go out to bed. The last public proposal was for a $1 long-term lease of the building and all of its equipment with the organization taking over all operations and proceeds. The deal states that $2 million will be spent in capital improvements to the ice arena. No one from Black Bears organization has been inside of our facility or has done any research to see what repairs and renovations are needed. Black Bear Sports Group claims to be the experts in the field. This company has only been in business for five years. They have also claimed to be the largest operator of ice arenas in the country. Again, this is a false representation. FMC Sports operates 23 facilities and RMS operates 33. Black Bear Sports Group operates 15. Our hope is to, of course, avoid the sale, however. If that is un inevitable, the council must do their due diligence and investigate all options. In addition, there are some other issues that should be mentioned. The opponents of the ice arena listed their concerns as traffic on Church Road, the cost of the construction and future taxpayer subsidies, canceling the ongoing project and mitigating the contract with Costello Construction and re redesigning the project for courts does not seem like it will save any money. Please provide real numbers for these costs. The traffic for courts will not be less than the traffic for an ice arena and, in fact, will create far more pedestrian traffic. Skaters do not walk or bike to the ice arena because the equipment is so cumbersome and the same cannot be said for the children that will use the courts. The current ice facility was subsidized by slightly over $300,000 last year. Most of that was due to the cost of maintaining a 50-year-old building. The projections for the new two-sheet facility clearly showed that the ice arena will create a profit for the city. The current gymnasium was subsidized by over $700,000 last year, providing that adding new courts will simply create a larger burden on the taxpayers. Why is the ice arena being held to a higher standard than any other city amenities? The existing gymnasium requires twice as much subsidies per year as the ice arena. The skate park, ball fields, Allen Pond, free concerts, and dog park generate no income and are completely funded by the taxpayers. Why aren't they, any of those amenities within the city being considered for, for outsourced management? The Bowie city motto states, growth, unity, and progress. By revisiting the decision on the iceplex, you have stopped growth and have ignited hostility and division in the community. We have a diverse and progressive program that you are ending by stopping the project and considering a sale of the facility. 
There is a 50-year history of the Bowie Ice Arena that will end if you give up the city management. The Bowie Hockey Club, the Bowie Figure Skating County, and the Bowie ISI team will cease to exist. We will no longer be able to provide the community outreach and community affordability that offer that we offer at this time. The mayor promised that the ICE community would receive a state-of-the-art facility. If that means selling our facility and turning over operations to Black Bear Sports, we would prefer a less expensive renovation of the existing ICE arena. If we wanted to skate at a facility run by a management group, we would go to Piney Orchard. If the council allows the sale of our facility to Black Bear Sports, it will not be a partnership, it will be a takeover. The council has promised that all staff will be retained. Salaries will go up and all programs will be retained. The same was said before the purchase of Piney Orchard. The ISI program and team were disbanded. The skating director was demoted and at this point, I believe, fired. To, the Learn to Skate program was sold. The coaching staff for group lessons was cut in half. The hourly rate for rentals was drastically increased. The fact is, if the city chooses to turn over management and operations to a third party, they will have no control over staff programs, or it is not just about the increase in fees, although that is a very valid discussion. It is also about the personal customer experience I receive at Bowie. I feel as though the city council and the mayor are not listening to the wishes of their residents. I believe what makes Bowie so great is the services and amenities it provides to the residents and non-residents. With the decisions that have been recently made, I feel like so much is being taken away and so much money is being wasted for absolutely no good reason. Please do not sell or take away the buoy ice arena. And that's it. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Um, at this point, uh, we will move to council announce announcements. Uh, do mem any members want to be recognized? Uh, yes, please. Yes, Councilwoman Harrison. Thank you, Mayor Botain Barafo. I would like to, oh, good evening, everyone. Um, make, have some reminders about our census and our upcoming primary election. We want to certainly thank all of you who have completed the 2020 census. We are grateful for your participation. And at this point, 77% of Bowie households have completed the census. However, we need full participation, 100%, so that Bowie will receive its fair share of the billions of dollars in federal funding that will flow into communities over the next decade. As Prince George's County has been hit particularly hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, the importance of the city and county receiving their fair share of the funding for health care, emergency services, and vaccines is paramount. Census data will play a large part in the allocation of these resources. Completing the 2020 census takes only about 10 minutes. It can be done online, by mail, or by phone. There is no citizenship question. It's easy, secure, and socially responsible thing to do. Let's all do our part to make Bowie count. Learn more at www.2020census.gov. Also, just a reminder that primary election day is tomorrow, June 2nd, and this election is being conducted mostly by mail. All registered and eligible voters should have received a ballot in the mail. Please complete it and return it in the self-addressed self envelope as soon as possible. You don't need a stamp. Or you can drop it off at the Bowie Gymnasium or one of the other four voting sites in the county. Make sure to sign the oath on the back of the ballot envelope or it will not be counted. Ballots must be postmarked by tomorrow or placed in the drop boxes by 8 p.m. In-person voting will be available at the city gym for those who cannot vote by mail, but we highly encourage you to return your ballot by mail. However, whatever you do, please vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Would any other members like to be recognized? All right, moving on to the city manager's report. Mayor Pro Tem uh, and members of council and residents out there, uh, I'd like to let everybody know that the, the city staff is entering into phase one of the reconstitution plan associated with COVID-19. And uh, what that, in a summary, we, uh, we will be collecting bulk trash and uh, using a, uh, a grapple truck to protect our people. We are now collecting um, uh, cardboard uh, set aside the, 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 the recycling bins. We will be uh, bringing our um, 
our streets uh, crews back on full time now. We will be uh, also uh, conducting, um, bring all of the employees who can telework will continue to telework. Those who won't will come in to, uh, to the, their respective buildings with some uh, restraints regarding, to, regarding uh, social distancing. So we are, we'll see how that whole thing works and we're working uh, in conjunction with the Prince George's County Executives Directors. Thank you. Um, Mr. City Manager, will City Hall be open to the public? Not, not in phase one, that's phase two. Okay, just wanna make sure. And Thanks. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Um, at this point, the chair will entertain a motion to approve or reject the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Any objections? Um, moved. As I do, I have a quick question about mm -hmm. the consent agenda. Um, item G, under the consent agenda, I do know we are looking at the the COVID um, Business Recovery Act, Ordinance 0-6-20. I do have a question about that. Are we adopting that tonight? We're not adopting it. No. No, it's, it's just uh, introduction. Uh, we'll have discussion at the next session. Oh, okay. Yes, and a public hearing. Tonight is just for an introduction. Okay, okay, I'm so fine with that. public hearing and uh, voting for it will be, take place at the June 15th meeting. Okay, all right, I'm fine with that. Thank you, thank you, City Clerk. Thank you, Council Members. All right, it's been moved and properly seconded. Any other comments for debate? All right, calling for the vote. Uh, Madam City Clerk, can we do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Council Member Ndebumalu? Aye. Council Member Wolfley? Aye. Council Member Steph? Aye. Council Member Gardner? Aye. Council Member Harrison? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Ayes have it, six, zero. Thank you. Moving on to new business, um, item A, the Bowie Bick update. Um, at this point, I yield to staff. You couldn't see the wonderful choreography without music here that transitioned us to this spot here. Uh, Got to be on light on something. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm John Henry King, the Economic Development Director. Each year, we bring to you for the for an update briefing the Bowie Business Innovation Center. The Bowie Business Innovation Center was created by this City Council, beginning with actions taken in 2007. Uh, you fund it each year. Uh, it is an important tool in growing and keeping our business base strong in Bowie. Tonight we have with us the Executive Director of the Bowie Business Innovation Center, Lisa Smith, and she will introduce uh, those additional folks with her and give you tonight's briefing. Ms. Smith. Okay, I saw her there. Lisa, are you there? Yes. Okay, you're on, we can hear you now, and we can see your slide, although it's in the preview mode, not the show mode. Okay, we struggled with that earlier, Mr. King. Um, let me try one other, one other thing here. Uh, I am... Is that better? No. No. 
Um, at the bottom of your screen, there should be like a share button next to the mute button. If you click that, it'll share your screen. Once you get in PowerPoint, if you click the shot slideshow and click present, it should show the full screen. I am trying very hard to do that. And it's the third button to the left on your screen. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Now, well, now that you're in PowerPoint, if you just go to slideshow at the top, I'm partially blind. <clears throat> and it should give you an option to present. And has, is that showing properly now? It's, it's at the top. Um, in the menu options? Yeah. Lisa, would you like for me to show it on mine, if it'll be I, easier for you? I would be indebted to, if you would, Awilda. We struggled for this for quite a period of time before the meeting. No problem. So if you just want to close out your window, I'll share mine. That would be amazing. Thank you. Is that better? Okay, let's see. Hold on. Let me, I'm bringing it up in mine here. So yeah, we had a hard time with it. Okay, let me just share my screen here. Hold on one second. Okay. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. There you go. And then, uh, Wilda, can you advance the slides for us? Because I don't believe I have control now. Sure. Just let me know when you're ready to go to the next one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Raglan, if you would introduce yourself and get us going, that would be wonderful. Sure. Uh, I'm assuming everybody can hear me okay? Yes, you're good. Wonderful, thank you, sir. So building on uh, what Mr. King said, uh, in 2007, the City of Bowie Economic Development Committee recommended to the mayor and council um, that a business incubator be established in the City of Bowie. And with that, uh, city staff uh, was able to secure matching funding from the state of Maryland through TEDCO to initiate a, a grant to initiate a study to determine if in fact a business incubator in the city of Bowie had merit. And the determination in 2009, 2010 was that it did. In 2010, a strategic decision was made to co-locate the city's business incubator, which serves private sector companies at Bowie State University. And I think that was an incredibly smart decision and Bowie Bit continues to be uh, an anchor for entrepreneurship on the campus of Bowie State University. In 2011, uh, we hired uh, Lisa Smith as our inaugural executive director. She's been here ever since. We won't let her go. Uh, and of note, uh, for every dollar of direct investment that the city of Bowie makes, I think it's important to note that the Bowie BIC raises an additional $3 um, for their operating um, uh, funds every year, their bu operating budget every year, excuse me. So it is by far one of the most successful public-private partnerships in the state, because for every dollar that's uh, contributed by the city, there's another $3 contributed by industry, the state, the feds, uh, and the county. Um, I, as the chairman of the City Bowie Economic Development Committee and current chairman of the uh, Bowie BIC, also serve as the vice chair of the uh, Bowie State University, Bowie State University Foundation, and I have had the pleasure of hearing Dr. Bro say on a number of occasions how proud she is that Bowie State University is the only historically black college in America that has a business innovation center located on its campus. And we should all be proud of that fact. Um, well, so we have that, the next slide from, from Mr. Ragland, please. Thank you. Okay, now why wouldn't it go? Mr. Regler, I think you had a few comments you wanted to make on this. 
So again, very quickly, very briefly, um, our vision is to build a dynamic entrepreneurship ecosystem. Uh, as many of you know, there's currently a, ma a major project going uh, on campus, being built on campus, which is the Entrepreneurship Center. Uh, Bowie Big will serve as one of the anchors on the ground floor for that uh, Entrepreneurship Center, which is a living learning laboratory on the campus of Bowie State uh, to service the needs of students and the community. Um, we coordinate and develop business support activities. Again, Lisa will talk about uh, a major initiative that we launched last year, which was the 8A Incubator. Uh, Senator Ben Card was on campus last year at Bowie State University, citing the work being done by Bowie Bick as a model for the nation as he introduced legislation to increase the amount of funding for historically black colleges that work with 8A companies. So we were pl uh, proud to be a pioneer in that. And then of course we support activities obviously uh, at Bowie State, uh, for the city of Bowie and for the region. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa to give our actual report. Thank you, next slide a little please. Um, and so the, I'm sure that the, the council is gonna say, well, well, what does all that mean? How does that translate? So here's a snapshot of what Bowie Bick was up to in 2019. Um, we were operating two different accelerator programs, our business accelerator, uh, as well as, as Sherman mentioned, the ADA accelerator, which we'll talk about more in a moment. But uh, we were really pleased to see that just the 18 companies in our program were able to generate $40 million plus in revenues and over 500 jobs. The 32 companies that were part of the ADA Accelerator cohorts one and two, by the end of December, um, they were able to generate 12 million and um, we were really pleased at how fast that came together. Excuse me? Can you hear me all right? Yes, thank you. Um, it, was a, it was a very busy year for us with over 1,500 entrepreneurs from the city of Bowie and Prince George's County taking advantage of our networking events, our open door sessions, and the counseling sessions that take place every week at Bowie Bick using professional counselors. We're very proud of the counselors advisors that work with us each month. They are one of the great secrets to the success of Bowie Bick. And as Sherman mentioned, being on the Bowie State campus gives us a unique opportunity and gives our clients an opportunity to work in a meaningful way with Bowie State University students. And between our, our clients, the Bowie Big management team, our board, we were able to provide paid internships for 10 student interns. So we were very pleased about that. Next slide, Wilda. Like, if you click the slide, usually it, it is. Go. It's it's moving slow for some reason. <laughs> it's tired. <laughs> it's been a busy year. Um, um, but for uh, one of the um, great responsibilities that we have as the, as the business uh, accelerator program for the city buoy is to pay close attention to the number of buoy uh, businesses that we're able to work with each year. And so this slide kind of drills down a little bit to kind of demonstrate among the three professional counseling organizations that are on site each week at Bowie Bick, um, I give you some numbers over the course of the year of how many buoy businesses in the four buoy zip codes that we're able to assist. That the Small Business Development Center, the Maryland Women's Business Center, and the Maryland uh, Procurement and Technical Assistance Center, or PTAC. Um, and um, the uh, SBDC numbers uh, represent almost 100% of the clients that they see in Bowie. The Maryland Women's Business Center is probably, they say, close to 80% of the clients that they see are, are Bowie women. Um, and the PTAC uh, uh, clients are really more distributed across the county. Um, the um, um, Activities that Bowie Bick undertakes each month throughout the year um, attracted over 300 uh, Bowie-based businesses. This would be our open door sessions, our training sessions, networking events, um, and, um, and we have seen that number grow very steadily over the years, and we're very pleased to see that. Um, of the Bowie Bick uh, resident clients, three out of four are Bowie residents, and three out of five of our affiliate clients our residents of Bowie. Next slide, please, Wilda. 
Now, um, since March, we've been very busy, as you might imagine, not only working with our clients, but also providing whatever kind of business assistance we can for the companies in Bowie, as well as the county that are being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so just since March, we've been able to have 51, um, 51 entrepreneurs take advantage of our open door sessions. Um, and 13 of those were buoy based businesses, 33 were part were county um, entrepreneurs, and then there were a few that snuck in from other jurisdictions. But those are the important numbers that I kind of wanted you to see. I was very, very pleased to be able to work with Council Member Boafo um, on the uh, virtual town hall that the city of Bowie um, um, conducted on the 7th of April. Um, that was a great uh, learning experience for us because we turned around then a few days later and were able to do an, a very large webinar all about the federal funding opportunities, which attracted more people after it was over than when, we, when it was actually going on. We have about, had over 130 people participating in the webinar asking questions, but we had even more people visit our website and download that presentation. So we know how important this kind of information in a timely fashion is for entrepreneurs. Next slide, please, Wilda. Now, the, all of this activity adds up to a very uh, dynamic um, group of, um, of ecosystem um, opportunities, I guess you could say. And so all of the things that Bowie Big does with its clients and that it's able to do with the Bowie community, all is part of that growing ecosystem here that we enjoy and that is so important to the development of, of uh, vibrant businesses and new business activities. We were very, very pleased to see that at the end of December, uh, the Baltimore Business Journal named Bowie Bick the 11th largest accelerator program in the state of Maryland in terms of the number of clients we had. Um, and that made us also the largest business accelerator program in Prince George's County. Next slide, please. Sherman mentioned um, our um, Great honor to be mentioned in the legislation that Senator Cardin proposed in October. And Dr. Bro and I were very pleased to be able to host him and his team at, uh, at Bowie Bick when he announced uh, the legislation and the role that Bowie Bick had played as, as far as being an example. It was also a great experience for us to have so many of the members of our ecosystem in the room. You can't see this from the picture. But that room was packed with our resource partners, our counseling partners, the entrepreneurs, our clients, um, our board members, some of our corporate sponsors. It was really great opportunity to bring them all together um, to celebrate um, what ecosystem building can mean in an economic development sense. Next slide, please. Sherman mentioned the um, 8 Accelerator that we launched in 2019. This was truly a milestone activity for us. Um, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we had two, uh, coho two cohorts that participated. Uh, I've told you a little bit about the uh, financial impact of them being part of our program. Um, the community that they've built is uh, beyond anything that we could have anticipated when we started this, the way that they work together and they refer business. In fact, one of them called me today with a business opportunity for another member of the cohort. and said, by the way, I've just won another $5 million contract. And, and so this is a, a, a very lively community. And so it was, that was a lot for us to take in. And we will conduct uh, another 8 day accelerator program in the fall. But it was a very, very special um, treat for us to learn um, that later this month, on the 24th of June, the International Business Innovation Association, at their virtual international conference, is going to be uh, giving the 2020 award for the most innovative entrepreneurship center to the Bowie Business Innovation Center's 8A Accelerator Program. So we're really quite excited about that. We're sorry that we're not going to be there in person to celebrate, but uh, we were very happy to, to receive that recognition, and, to, and that will also spur us to continue to offer this program. Next slide, please. I think that we can never lose sight of what the real reason that the Bowie Bick exists for. All these awards are great, 
but it's the economic impact that we are most concerned about being able to deliver year after year um, to larger groups of folks with um, increasing amounts of impact. I've, I've pulled out three particular buoy big um, companies to give you a small taste of what's actually happening with our buoy businesses that are part of the Business Accelerator Program. Sage Services is one of our graduate companies, um, and they have been working steadily and are now finally at the point where they will probably be just at under a million dollars in revenue this year with their new NASA contracts, their State Department contracts, and their NOAA contracts. OpsTech Alliance, you've heard me talk about them before. They are, for the second year, our only buoy bit company in the Inc. Fast 5000. Um, they had a major contract win, which allowed them to hire 300 folks in Georgia in, um, uh, in September of this year, and they have gone on to win new business here in the region. Um, Food Resource, I want to call out because they are a woman-owned buoy business in a very interesting business niche, which is all around labeling for food products and, um, and for produce. And they have been quite busy, actually, during the COVID pandemic as food companies have changed the way they ship food, changed the packaging sizes, and new legislation has come online that impacts changes. So there's one very small company that's been very busy during the, the pandemic. Next slide, please. The added value also extends to the work that we do at Bowie State University through paid internships and the way that we are able to work with um, the faculty and the alumni community at Bowie State. Um, as Sherman mentioned, we were established at Bowie State where we actually lease office space each year from the university uh, for about, for nearly $40,000. Um, we offer paid internships with our management team, which is another $9,000 a year that goes right into the pockets of students. Um, the, um, the fact that we're on campus makes us a little bit of a magnet for students. So we um, have many students in and out of the Bowie Bic talking about their classes, looking for advice, talking with our, our clients. And it's a very, it's become a very great um, um, community kind of uh, gathering place on campus, which we're very proud of. I mentioned that, you know, we have three sets of professional counselors each week. Those counselors also counsel students, they counsel faculty, and, and they work with uh, the alums that come on campus. So we're able to really add some, some great value on the entrepreneur support side for the university. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be looking at, too, is extending uh, student internships into our 8A Accelerator program. Oh. Um, next slide, please. Um, the Entrepreneurship Academy is a very close uh, partner for us at the university. Um, and we, and Sherman mentioned the new building. We will actually be literally sharing the same space with them. Uh, the idea being that we'll be able to generate even more activity when the students and the entrepreneurs are in closer proximity. Right now, we're separated by one floor um, in our building. Um, we've always been a big supporter of um, Entrepreneurship Academy activities, particularly focusing on the global entrepreneurship activities where we are a financial sponsor to the tune of several thousand dollars each year, and where we also are very um, pleased to be part of the judging panel for the annual Bulldog Pitch competitions, where we actually hear the students walk through their paces and um, we select the best for a cash prize. Next slide, please. Now, we mentioned that we've been very concerned that we be on the front lines as far as helping provide business assistance to all of our companies and to the community. Um, and I talked a little bit about that in an earlier slide. But we um, also have been very um, active working with the um, Economic Development Committee for the city of Bowie to propose some specific activities for buoy businesses um, that we hope to have a chance to um, to, to really get underway um, in the in the coming weeks because we see the value of, of what needs to happen as we move from the relief to recovery and then to resilience. I think it's important that you know we get to that place where now we're trying to equip businesses for the new normal. Uh, by the same token, um, we we've been asked by Prince George's County to help them develop 
um, some special some special business assistance activities different from the city of Bowie, targeting some of the uh, the businesses in Prince George's County. Next slide, please. The Bowie Bic is a Maryland nonprofit with a, with a professional staff of two and a lot of help from some interns. But I would be remiss if I did not call out to the mayor and council um, the Bowie Bic Board of Directors, which is um, a volunteer board of all business leaders that are pretty much an activist board, um, and they play specific roles in the Bowie community that um, is of huge value to the staff and enriches the programming that we're able to provide. You, you uh, are all very familiar with Sherman Raglan, and you know he, he mentioned the different hats that he wears. Wendy Jenkins from Capital One lives in Old, old Bowie um, and, and um, helps us kind of stay grounded with some of the issues um, that are right near and dear and close to home uh, for Bowie Bick and our other clients that are based in Bowie. Charlene Wade, a very successful 8A um, businesswoman um, and, um, and a role model for some of our 8A businesses and also a mentor for some of our 8A businesses. And Greg Bussing from Clifton Larson Allen, who actually graduated from Bowie State University with a degree in finance. And Clifton Larson Allen has been, was one of the founding members of the Bowie Bick Board. Um, and it, so between Greg and the fact that he has interns, he participates in some of the um, on-campus activities that we do, it really helps get, keep us very grounded and very centered. Next slide. And as I said with my competition with my board, same applies to the corporate sponsors that help Bowie Bick and all the work that it does in our corporate community. So I would be remiss not to mention that in addition to our board members, we have a number of, of corporate citizens that are financial and programmatic resource partners uh, with Bowiebic. Next slide. And I just want to end by thanking the council for their confidence in us and their continuing support. Um, it's a it's a completely evolving and and uh, and dynamic. Um, ecosystem that we find ourselves in. We're pleased to be able to play a role in it, and, and we look forward to continuing to provide the kind of support that Bowie and its businesses need as we, um, as we live beyond um, COVID-19. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions that council members have. Thank you so much, Lisa and Sherman, um, for your leadership here in Bowie, especially when it comes to this COVID-19 pandemic. You guys have been great in getting assistance to businesses. Um, do any members uh, have any questions or comments at this time? Great. Thank you so much, Lisa. Moving on to item B, the adoption of resolution R-31-20. I yield to city staff. Good evening. Can you hear me there now? Yes, you're good. Go ahead, Jesse. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, there, there are many critical issues uh, pressing on the lives and minds of, at this time of all of us. And my presentation tonight will focus on a small part, but a small significant part uh, of one of them. The COVID-19 viral pandemic has uh, created major challenges in all sectors of society and disrupted uh, every aspect of our daily lives. The dynamics of isolation, lost income, sickness, and uh, uh, from a personal perspective also, including the death of friends and loved ones, and the uncertainty of the nature of the world uh, that we have coming tomorrow, are causing us to uh, rethink and uh, reprioritize our personal goals and objectives as well as those of our public institutions and private enterprises. On March 27th, 2020, Congress uh, passed the um, Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities, uh, Security Act, which we refer to as CARES. Uh, that act provided uh, $5 billion in funds to the, to the U.S. Department of Housing and community development. HUD provided to the city of Bowie $116,863 from that fund. And tonight we've come to you with our proposal to uh, spend uh, the funds based on certain requirements that HUD has. 
Tonight we have, as required by HUD, and, uh, documents before you which include a, an amendment to the city's uh, 2019 to 2023 consolidated plan, a substantial amendment to the annual action plan, and an amendment to the uh, uh, citizen participation plan, all of which those three documents are required by HUD and you have them before you. Uh, tonight, we've completed all the requirements in addition to the expedited process HUD set up for us to actually uh, go through the citizen participation public information and comment period so that we could get the money out to the public uh, at this time of need. We have three proposals that we presented to you tonight, one of which I might want to um, uh, amend, but we'll go through them. The first one is an emergency medical assistance program. In that program, we propose to provide up to uh, between $500 and $1,000 uh, per uh, household to assist with uh, rental uh, issues that families are uh, experiencing right now. And we have prioritized families that have children, families uh, where one or more of the household uh, major earners has have been furloughed, lost their job, um, or uh, seniors and folks who are disabled. The second program is the uh, uh, emergency food assistance program, uh, which I have uh, some pause with right now because I was not aware until Friday that uh, the ordinance that was you voted on earlier included $50,000 for the Bowie Pantry. And uh, I'm questioning whether or not I want to add another $10,000 to that of federal money. Uh, the third program uh, is a reimbursement program for uh, personal protective equipment and other supplies for my staff. Uh, when I attempted to get uh, equipment from uh, city uh, public uh, safety staff earlier, I was told it was only for the police department and one other group within the city. But I'm in charge of uh, homelessness and other outreach activities uh, for the city, including a housing rehab program that requires me and my staff to go out and be among the public and in some very uh, dangerous and uh, precarious environments uh, of the homeless. So I, I will need that equipment, and those are the three programs that I propose for this evening. The experience the, of the staff in managing this kind of national program has been well established as we manage a similar program under the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act, uh, where the city was provided about $500,000 through the Department of Energy. And through that program, we have uh, funded the first comprehensive energy audit of all city buildings. We funded the installation of solar panels on several city buildings. We purchased and deployed uh, with public works those large blue recycling bins you see in several communities and created that as a pilot program. The city went on later to actually purchase them for the rest of the city. And then we also purchased energy efficient lighting for several of the city's ball fields with part of that $500,000 from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. So these are the programs we're proposing to uh, use to spend the money to be helpful to those persons who really are in need. Uh, and we suspect that over the next uh, four to six months, uh, this problem is going to uh, get even greater and more people are going uh, to be uh, coming to the city in need of help because once the rent moratoriums and eviction moratoriums are lifted, we have a feeling that a number of landlords are going to be evicting a lot of people who are not going to be able to reach satisfactory uh, payment plans. And uh, both the county, uh, the state, and all of us in the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments Housing Directors Association are discussing this on an ongoing basis. So with that, I'll just end and say those are our proposals. We met all the requirements of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the CARES Act. This is an emergency situation, and we'll, we'll be coming back to you on an emergency basis, probably to uh, work with a firm in order to get the rent uh, a rental assistance program up and running uh, very, very soon. Uh, with that, uh, I just ask that you accept the proposals I've given you. Uh, think about, I will think about the uh, contribution for food through the pantry given the fact that there's another $50,000 $50, uh, issue on the table. 
I could use that $10,000 that I was going to propose to help with the rental assistance program. So uh, we want you to uh, consider what we've offered tonight, and uh, I'll, I'll finish and we'll take any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. Um, City Clerk, is there anything from public hearing at all? No, sir. Thank you. At this time, do members have any questions or comments for city staff or Mr. Bugs? Councilman. Thank you. Uh, quick question for you. Uh, thanks for expeditiously getting through uh, the bureaucracy to put this in place. Uh, I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, quick question regarding uh, rental assistance versus mortgage assistance. Uh, have, is there any uh, similar programs that you've seen in the past elsewhere uh, that might be suitable to, to help with those in need of mortgage as opposed to just rental? No, almost all of the federal programs are geared toward uh, rental assistance because they deal with the specific low mod income groups and that's where most renters are. Uh, the mortgage assistance programs are generally put together by the feds or state at a different level through different uh, programs. But I can do some research and, and get back to you and let you know what I discover. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Any other comments? Councilman Gardner. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tim Rolfo. I wanted to say, Mr. Bugs, I really want to say I appreciate all the fine work that you do and have been doing on behalf of the residents of the city of Bowie for many years. You do an excellent job. And I know personally some of the work that you've done in the hands and the individual lives that you've touched and improved for the better. I want to thank you for um, taking the opportunity for looking out for the individual buoy resident during these difficult times. And um, you do have my support for, for the adoption of resolution R-31-20. But thank you again, Mr. Bucks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members at this time? Okay, with that, the chair will entertain a motion for adoption of resolution R-3120. So moved. It's been Second. moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Any objections? Moving on to debate. Hearing none, we will call for the vote. This will be a roll call vote. Okay, just a quick question. Who, I believe it was, was it Councilmember Wolfley that made the motion? Yes, that's yes. correct. Okay, I need to make sure. Councilmember Ndebumalu? Aye. Councilmember Wolfley? Aye. Councilmember Stev? Aye. Councilmember Gardner? Aye. Councilmember Harrison? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Okay, the ayes have it, 6-0. Thank you so much, City Clerk. Moving on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Thank you, Jesse. Moving on to new business item C, um, our legislative report from our city lobbyist, um, Venable LLP. Um, I will yield now to Greg Gill of Venable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you hear me? Yes, you were good. You? Yep, you're good. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, I'll, 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 try, I'll try to be very brief, and I'll set my comments off by saying the session was a, a difficult one. Hey, Greg. Yes? Uh, you're a little muffled. Can you hear me now? It's a little better. Yeah, I, I live in the southern tier. We don't get very, we don't have very good telecommunications down here. So I apologize. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, I would describe uh, our session much like uh, a movie that was entitled Against All Odds. The primary uh, legislative objective that was given to us, charged with, to us by the council, was inclusion in the uh, package of the racing reform bill, the provision that would uh, transfer the 
from a Bowie racetrack property to the city of Bowie. Um, there were op- there were times and opportunities where we, where we thought we were not going to be successful, but ultimately we were. Um, many of the, I guess, past um, things we thought were statements of truth, like you know. Hey, hey, Greg. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. We're still having a hard time hearing you here in chambers. Still seems a little muffled. Well, let me see if I can get it. Um, John, is too long? Do you want to try that? So you might have a better sound. Why don't we have Brian speak about the Louis Race Track property? Hey, Brian, can you call? Hi. You sound great. Uh, okay. Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? You're good. Okay. Yes. Um, as Greg said, um, we were, uh, it was through a lot of hard work. Uh, we were able to uh, help Senator Peters, who was our legislative champion for sure, uh, have our uh, language included in the uh, Pimlico legislation that, as we all know, transfers the property to the city of Bowie subject to an MOU with uh, Bowie State University. In addition, uh, we supported Senator Peters. I believe he got a pre-authorization for $3 million in the capital budget um, for, I believe, two fiscal years from now um, that can, that goes to the city of Bowie for improvements at the Bowie Racetrack facility. Um, so that's something to watch over the next couple of sessions, but uh, due to um, a, a lot of fine work um, from uh, Senator Peters and our delegate um, from District 23, uh, we were able to shepherd that through. Thank you so much. Uh, did anyone else from the Venable team want to chime in? Okay, well, with that, I will move to uh, the question and answer portion of this. Um, I'm going to allot each member of this council a few minutes to uh, ask questions to our lobbyists, um, and we will start with our at-large members. Uh, Councilman Gardner, do you have any questions? Thank you, um, um, Mayor Pro Tem Brothel. No, at this time, I do not have any questions. Thank you. Councilwoman Harrison. Thank you, sir. Um, quick question. Um, outside of the Bowie Waste Track, there were no other uh, items um, on your agenda for the legislative session? John, can you hear me? There were a number of items on our agenda uh, for the legislative session. Frankly, um, we sent out regular updates um, to the council and the members provided an opportunity to testify the council um, a number of um, legislation, pieces of legislation with respect to that. We monitored the capital budget, particularly with respect to the widening of I-97 to 450 and the um, allocated um, money to widen Route 301. Um, we um, uh, worked, um, you know, directly um, with um, with respect to um, following capital money you know, for accessibility issues, particularly for disabled and out, out elderly. And we were watching very closely, and Brian can speak more directly to this, the issue of net energy metering um, that came you know, from the TELSA issue um, that we discussed in January. So there were a number of issues um, that we um, followed. We followed the, um, uh, the uh, higher education um, funding um, issue on behalf of um, the council. Um, members um, testified in, in respect to um, uh, to the historically um, black college and university issue. 
Unfortunately, that bill was vetoed, passed a significant piece of legislation, um, but was unfortunately vetoed by the governor. Um, the General Assembly is not expected to come back into session um, until January at that time. Um, a veto override would require a three-fifths majority of both the Senate mm -hmm. and the House. That would be 29 votes in the Senate and 85 votes in the House to override that veto. And we also, and we also, we also provided weekly, weekly and sometimes twice a week notices of local legislation of interest to members as well as hearings. Yes, we did receive those and we appreciate them very much. Thank you very much. You answered my question. Councilman Wolfley. Councilman Estef. No, I'm good, thank you. And Councilwoman and Debu Madu. No, I'm good, thank you. All right, well thank you guys for um, coming today and providing a legislative report. As you know, um, as everyone knows, Annapolis was pretty hectic this year, especially with COVID impacting. Uh, but I wanna personally thank our delegates um, and our state senator for the work that they did, um, and especially getting the racetrack issue across the finish line for us. And again, thank you to our lobbyists for helping out. Um, and hopefully we have a safe and better um, session in uh, 2021. Thank you guys. Yes, sir. It would be very helpful if we began thinking about what our priority is going to be for the next session now so that we can have the legislation induced, introduced on a timely basis. Sounds good. We can uh, consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item D, the discussion of a council strategic retreat. I'm gonna to yield to city staff. Thank you, city council. Uh, as you just approved in the uh, budget, one of the goals for the city council in the upcoming year is to hold a council retreat. And in order to get uh, started with the planning associated with that, we wanted to start a conversation in regards to kind of what time of year you all would like to uh, conduct that, uh, where we could have that. We have a number of locations and city facilities that we could do that. And also the, the mode or the method in which we're looking at uh, doing the uh, city retreat. Is this gonna be a discussion amongst the council, the council and staff, should it be a facilitated session? I wanted to really kind of uh, uh, start the discussion with your ideas in terms of some of your objectives or what you envision in regards to this so we can begin preparing for this. Sounds good, Mr. City Manager, do you have anything to add? No, sir, we're, we're looking to hear what you all would like. Sounds good, at this time I'm gonna go down the line once again, allow each member the opportunity to provide some input here for city staff, uh, starting with Councilman Honorary Gardner. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem uh, As you all uh, move forward with planning any sort of retreat, just take in mind uh, cost. I, I always like to um, minimize spending any of the city residents' money. So, and it's always good team building, those sort of things, and and very close. It's always good to have local, local. Thank you, Councilwoman Harrison. Um, I recommend Hawaii. <laughs> oh, oh, darn, we can't do that. Oh, no, I, 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 I concur with uh, Councilmember Gardner's comments, especially with the team building portion. That'd be great. And speakers, if we want to have someone come in, you know, um, for any topics of, um, you know, concern or just to get additional information, we can kind of talk about that as well. Councilman Wolfley. Thank you. Uh, I was going to suggest Vegas, but I don't think that's any better either. Uh, no, I, I have a uh, fondness for Bowie, so I think that's uh, um, um, plenty good enough in terms of uh, where we ought to uh, gather. Um, I think, you know, to, uh, uh, to a couple of prior council um, members who had spoken, I, th I think, you know, using staff to the fullest extent possible. Maybe there's some uh, facilitating trainer, excuse me, training for uh, facilitators that might uh, be beneficial to have someone do that uh, from internal. Uh, the, the problem I've seen that we've had is that when, if we use somebody outside that it takes some time to get them fully acclimated and aware of what's going on in the community and, and aware of that. 
Um, otherwise, I'm not opposed to having a, a, a professional facilitator come in if something reasonable can be, uh, uh, can be found. So I'm okay with that. If, if we don't think we have the, the staff uh, on hand, it might be uh, suited to that. Oh, and I would suggest that we uh, take a look at the COVID schedule here and uh, send, uh, see when things can open up a little bit more before we, uh, before we do that. Councilman, other, other than that, is sooner rather than later. <laughs> Councilman is Steph. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I'm also on team sooner rather than later, um, as the pandemic allows. Um, very quickly, I also just want to say um, how grateful I am to my colleagues. Um, I know we haven't had an opportunity to discuss this yet. Uh, we will more at a retreat. Um, but this group, having only been sworn in just a couple months ago, uh, has had a lot thrown at it. Um, I remember those first two months, we had more meetings, I think, as a group than we probably had as a council in the whole previous year uh, together. And uh, with everything from the legislative battles in Annapolis we jumped into right away um, to, you know, debates around uh, recreation facilities, a pandemic, um, all the events going on in our country right now, uh, it, it's been a lot. And um, uh, I think it's great for us to be able to get together to kind of pause, reflect, um, celebrate some of our genuine successes and kind of plan for as an organization how we want to move forward. And I'm really, really grateful that all my colleagues are on board with doing this. I think it'll be really helpful. Um, so I agree uh, as soon as possible, pandemic allowing, and I'm very appreciative to all my colleagues participating in this. Thank you so much, Councilman. Councilwoman Um I would just, the only thing I would like to say is probably sooner rather than later, just as everybody has stated. Um, yeah, sooner rather than later, I think somewhere local is fine. Uh, I think the main focus for me is just making sure that we can get together sooner rather than later so we can come together and continue to work together um, on a path forward for the city. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, I'll end with saying a couple things. Um, I do think that, again, team sooner rather than later seems to dominate here. Um, the one thing I do want to point out that I think is really important is Robert's rules and setting aside a set of rules that this council believes that they should operate under and somehow adopting that um, is going to be really important. Obviously, team building is really important in any uh, body like this. Right? We all have strong opinions and um, strong personalities as well. And so having that team building refer pressure, especially in the midst of COVID and all the things happening nationally, I think will be a good reset and course correction for us. Um, I do think this is an opportunity. I know we met with department heads earlier in the year, um, but I do think this is an opportunity where we can kind of go further in depth into things that we're interested in um, on, on that side of things and also bringing in um, lobbying consultants and, and things of that such. So yeah, I'm, I am on team sooner than later. City staff, do you need anything else from us? No, thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you. I think this is a good start for us uh, getting going with it, uh, knowing that we want to uh, move to something sooner. We can sort of plan on that in regards to uh, having something yeah. local with some facilities. Can I make and one more suggestion also? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think it would be prudent based on the economy if we just all brought either brought our food, our own food, or purchased our lunch um, ourselves instead of bringing that money out of the staff budget. Brown bag, okay. Yeah, if everyone agrees yes. with that. That's a good recommendation, okay. thank you. Okay. All right, with that, we will thank move, uh, the chair will entertain a motion for adjournment and moving to closed session. I move uh, to adjourn. Second. Um, point of clarification, somebody's gonna have to read yeah, the uh, moving to closed session. The four, it's not the goal to you. Michael, or do you? Yeah. If I may, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn to closed session under statutory authority of the Maryland Annotated Code, State Government Article 3-305, Paragraph B, Subparagraph 8, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Any objection? Debate? We're moving to closed session. Thank you, guys.